In the heart of the scorching Egyptian desert, the pyramids of Giza stood as silent witnesses to the passage of time. These ancient structures, shrouded in mystery and intrigue, held secrets that had confounded archaeologists and explorers for centuries. But none of these enigmas was as captivating or as feared as the curse of the pharaohs. The curse was said to have been cast by the vengeful spirits of the long-dead pharaohs, those mighty rulers of Egypt whose remains rested within the bowels of these colossal tombs. It was whispered among the locals that disturbing their eternal slumber would unleash a torrent of misfortune and death upon those who dared to trespass on their sacred resting place. The first recorded incident of the curse's malevolent power occurred in the early 19th century, when Napoleon's army invaded Egypt. The French general, in his relentless pursuit of conquest, had ordered his men to open the tomb of an ancient pharaoh. As they broke the seal, a sudden and storm engulfed the area, and the soldiers were pummeled by the relentless winds. Many died, and the survivors were plagued by illness and misfortune. The legend of the curse of the pharaohs began to take root. However, it was not until the late 19th and early 20th centuries that the curse gained international notoriety. Howard Carter, a British archaeologist, had spent years searching for the hidden tomb of Tutankhamun, the boy king of ancient Egypt. In 1922, his tireless efforts paid off when he discovered the entrance to the tomb in the Valley of the Kings. As he and his team ventured further into the burial chamber, they uncovered a treasure trove of unimaginable wealth and historical significance. But the jubilation of their discovery was short-lived. Soon after opening the tomb, strange and tragic events began to unfold. Several members of the expedition died under mysterious circumstances, and rumors of a curse associated with the tomb spread like wildfire. Lord Carnarvon, the financial backer of the expedition and one of the first to enter the tomb, fell seriously ill and died of a mosquito bite infection. Newspapers around the world sensationalized the story, attributing the deaths to the curse. Carter, however, remained indeterred by the rumors and continued his excavation work. He dismissed the idea of a curse as mere superstition and believed that the deaths could be explained by natural causes. Yet, as the death toll among those connected to the Tutankhamun expedition continued to rise, even he began to question the wisdom of his pursuits. The curse seemed to take a life of its own, not only affecting those who were directly involved with the excavation, but also those who had purchased artifacts from the tomb. Reports of strange occurrences and unexplained tragedies circulated widely. People became increasingly wary of anything associated with the tomb and its treasures. As the years passed, the curse of the pharaohs began to fade into legend. Archaeologists and historians continued to study and unearth the treasures of ancient Egypt without succumbing to its supposed malevolent effects. Still, the legend persists, casting a shadow over the allure of Egyptology and the mysteries of the pyramids. In the end, whether the curse of the pharaohs was real or mere coincidence remains a topic of debate. Some attribute the deaths and misfortunes to natural causes and the harsh conditions of the time. Others maintain that there are forces beyond our understanding, and that disturbing the final resting places of these ancient rulers carries consequences that we may never fully comprehend. Today, the pyramids of Giza and the tombs of the pharaohs continue to draw explorers and tourists from around the world, their magnetic pull and diminished by the passage of time. The curse of the pharaohs may have faded from the headlines, but the enigma of ancient Egypt endures an eternal riddle that continues to beckon the curious and the daring into its depths, promising both wonder and danger for those who dare to unlock its secrets.